The parasternal long axis view is the first view that we get in echocardiography. The walls of the left ventricle should be as perpendicular to the ultrasound beam as possible. We should be able to see the aortic valve and the aortic root, and we should be able to see the mitral valve leaflets and the left atrium. The apex of the heart should be on the left of our screen, and the base of the heart should be on the right of our screen. We normally measure wall thickness at end diastole, and we measure the left ventricular internal diameter here as well. We then measure the left ventricular internal diameter at end systole. To perform my measurement now, let me get to the right frame. I'm in systole at the moment, the aortic valves are open, so I'm going to scroll through. Mitral valve is opening now, so now I'm in diastole. Blood is coming in through the left atrium and filling into the left ventricle. The valve's open. I'll see a little period of diastasis. It's going to open up a bit wider again, and then now it's on its way to closure. The left ventricle's at its maximum point here. The tips of the leaflets are here, so I probably want to be measuring about here, just through the cords. If I'm unsure about what this is here, is this part of the septum or not, I can flick back and forth and I can see that that's really part of the right ventricle. That's probably a moderator band going up there, so I'm not going to include that in my measurement. Now it's important that I'm measuring with respect to the axis of the ventricle. This is quite an on-axis image, so it's not too difficult to do. But if it was off-axis and tilted like this, I would need to make sure I was cutting through the plane of the left ventricle, not just straight down my screen. Even on this ventricle here, measuring straight down would not be correct. So I'll place my first point. cutting through the left ventricle and down to the bright white pericardium here. Let's find our systolic frame now. I'm going forward. Aortic valve is opening, blood is being ejected from the heart. I'm going to keep going until it's snapped shut just there. If I go any further, you'll see the mitral valve now begins to open. I definitely don't want that. That's the start of diastole. Now you'll notice that when you go to place your point here on the top of the posterior wall, it's become very tricky. During systole, everything is squeezing together, and so the chordae tendinae attached to the mitral valve leaflets are being squashed against the posterior wall often, and it can be difficult to make sure you're excluding those from your measurement. So this is again where you really need to flick back and forth between the frames. If I go back to diastole, I can clearly see where the wall is. I can see that black-grey boundary here. Keep your eye on that boundary, and also keep your eye on these cords here, attached to the mitral valve. As we go into systole and the walls are coming together, notice how the wall's thickening and getting closer and closer to those cords. It almost touches them, but not quite. There's still that little black boundary that I can keep my eye on, and I know that the wall is here. Left ventricular diameter in systole, and I want to go for roughly the same point that I was measuring from in diastole. Septum, I have a nice clear boundary there to set my point. And again, I'm going across the left ventricle, and I'm going to set my point here through the cords down to the top of the posterior wall.